Hey guys, I am back with another CBCSO video and um, this time I want to finish off what I started and talk about how to fix the DMS settings and uh, also I noticed that the CBCSO battery is no longer available uh, to purchase on Chai's website I have no idea what that is about I hope it is not because of whatever I did any of you who were on the waiting list for one of those packs and now you can't get it I hope it's not my fault and I hope you're gonna get your battery soon but um, yeah so let's take a look at the configurations this was just supposed to be a quick video where I show you how to configure it correctly and fix all the stupid things that were put into the configuration but then yesterday the battery shut down on me and made me walk home so now i'm going to try again so here's what it looks like we take their app that's the daily bms smart bms app start that and you should see your device Usually if your board is on, the uh, Bluetooth will show up. And then we can see what the state is and it is now balancing. So everything looks good. So now let's go and look at the settings. So here is the first page in the preferences. And we'll start with the high voltage protection and the total voltage. But while we're at it, we might as well also fix the low voltage stuff. So high voltage protection. What we don't want to happen is to get cut off at 4.25. So we'll say 4.4. Up the magic password, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And now we'll do it again. Set. And come on, try it again. There we go. It's set. It takes a little, it takes a few seconds to write the new value. And then total voltage will also we'll do 88. And some of you guys seem to think that a lithium ion cell will just self destruct as soon as you put more than 4.2 volts onto it. And that is not true at all. It is true that 4.2 volts is the maximum voltage you, to, you should charge it to. That's the recommended maximum. Now, some users, they intentionally charge it higher and uh, are willing to sacrifice longevity of the battery in exchange for a little bit more range. I have no interest in doing that, so this is really beside the point. Because what you need to understand is there is a big difference between charging a lithium ion battery to a higher voltage versus sending amps back into it and the voltage spiking. If you send 10 amps, negative 10 amps, back into the battery because of regen breaking, the uh, depending on the internal resistance of the battery, the voltage will increase. Usually a high discharge battery will have less sag and therefore also will spike less. But regardless of that, the voltage will temporarily go up. Now, as soon as that current stops, the voltage will settle again at wherever it was before, or maybe a tiny bit above. So if you're writing of if, if your cells are at 4.15 and now you're breaking and sending let's say negative 10 amps into the pack that voltage will go up significantly maybe to 4.3 4.35 and this is exactly what happens in your xr or gt or whatnot and actually the xr especially the one with the pink cells sags a lot so i would not be surprised if that voltage went 
to 4.4 temporarily. But um, that is not the same as charging. So this is what we're configuring it for. But because we have this charge discharge PMS in here, you start to see the problem. Even if we agree that temporarily sending or temporarily spiking the voltage to 4.4 is acceptable because the actual voltage is still below 4.2. The problem is that in here, I don't have a way to change the setting for charging versus discharge. So now if I have a bad cell, or if I have a bad charger that gives me more than 84 volts, I would allow this here. And obviously I don't want that, but I'm not, I don't have a choice. So I always prioritize my own safety and life over longevity of the batteries. And again, even if we end up getting a cell to 4.4, it will not self destruct somehow. It will not catch on fire. It's, you need to go a lot higher than that for a long time before that happens. So. Um, and we can monitor it here so we know what our batteries look like. Anyway, so the same thing we want to do with the low voltage cutoffs, 2.5. We know that cells can handle 2.5, so why do anything higher than that? And the key is with our controllers, we don't need any of this protection while we're riding because we set up the protections in the controller so that it gives us pushback when we get to these values. So our controller is responsible for making sure that these values are never reached. Now, that's all we need on this first page. Now we don't have to worry about getting cut off when we're going downhill on, um, on a full battery. Of course, we don't want to overcharge the battery. That's why we get pushback from our controller. But the BMS is out of the picture. And uh, when we're at low voltage, we get low voltage tilt back. So we'll not over discharge our battery. All right, so apparently the BMS will shut off on me when I uh, when I make certain changes. Luckily, I was still connected this time to it. All right, so there are two more pages I wanted to go over. So here are the cell characteristics. It looks like they changed this to 30 amp hours. I don't know what they were thinking. Coincidentally, there is an instructional video. There is a um, daily VMS video out there. And in that video, they also set it to 30 amp hours and uh, because it's not the default and so that's this is what they must have done or maybe it is the default I don't know but if you want the state of charge to be correctly shown you need to have the correct amp hours in here so that'll be um, and as I write this I don't want to be writing so maybe best to do this when you're near the charger all right, the magic password, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then hit set again, 5.6 amp hours. Oh, it's giving me 5.5, that's great. Let's give it a bit more, 5.61. And all right, it shows 5.6 now. And then there's another setting in here, sleep, sleep waiting time. So this one right here in the middle, I thought, oh, wouldn't it be nice if we had auto power down because if I already have a discharge BMS I always forget to turn my board off and so sometimes it stays on overnight and sometimes over the whole weekend and uh, that's obviously not great because you don't want to drain your batteries unnecessarily so um, yeah I, I tried it out and I set it to 60 seconds just to see if it even works and sure enough it did turn my board off. The problem was it happened when I was out here and so I had to walk home and then the only way to turn it back on 
considering that we only have two wires going into the pack, so there's no way for it to know that you want it on. The only way it will turn on is if you connect a charger, and that's what I did, and it turned back on. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that shows you that really we should not, the normal user shouldn't have to even go into these settings because the settings aren't well documented. There is zero information from Chai, the daily BMS instructions translated from Chinese are pretty shitty and incomplete, so uh, they were not very helpful, and so I'm kind of just guessing and figuring shit out. So then I also learned that if you put it back to exactly 3600, that it then does not auto shut down. So I left it on for several hours and it did not shut down on me. So yeah, 3600 is the key. Just, I mean, basically just don't ever change it because if you change it to anything else, I would assume it will actually shut down on you and then you don't have a way to turn it back on. And then the other things um, all seem fine. I don't want to mess with them. So, yep, that was the configuration of the CBCSO. But, all in all, to summarize this, the key takeaway is that all these protections, which I really do want when charging, they have to be disabled if you have a BMS that does both charge and discharge, at least on a one-wheel type vehicle, where the BMS does not coordinate with the, with the controller. So, so the best we can do is to bypass the BMS for discharge and then we don't have to worry about it shutting us down for whatever reason it may think justifies it. We then can still configure it to uh, safe limits for the charging process. So we can go back to 4.25 volts per cell for charging and 88 volts, uh, what was it, 85 volts total. Those are totally reasonable numbers when it is charged only. Yeah, so if I had uh, one of those CBCSOs myself, that's the first thing I would do. Just bypass the BMS for discharge. Now, one more topic I wanted to bring up is the balancing on the CBCSO. Some users have reported problems with the balancing, and I also am not 100% sure that it is wired up correctly or configured correctly, but the first problem I see is that the active balancing, which appears to be a feature in the app, I don't know if this version of the VMS doesn't support it, but there's no way to enable it. And then the other problem is if we ignore the active balancing, active balancing is usually when you balance at all times or you just enable it to say balance now. Other BMSs don't have that feature either. So what you expect is that once they charge above a certain voltage, that then they start balancing. But what seems to be happening is that at least with the 5 amp charger that is included or that people buy with the CBCSO, the balancing just never seems to happen or happens for, for a very short period of time. So we don't really know and uh, I don't think we've gotten any response from Chai yet. So Max has been struggling with cells being out of balance. Mine, I haven't really yet concluded whether it is really balancing or it is just naturally balanced. But uh, whenever I charge it all the way up to 4.2 volts per cell, then it is 0 0.03 volts out of balance and it never seems to get that down. But as soon as I start riding it and go half a mile and the imbalance goes down, to 0 0.005 or something like that. So almost yes. an order of magnitude. Uh -huh. And um, so on this pack, I wouldn't be too worried. It seems fine, but I have no <laughs> concrete evidence that it is actually balancing. And um, 
one of the guys that was running the torque pack, which is a 19S pack with uh, similar cells, just a bigger version of them. He rode the battery without any BMS for three months, took it all apart, and the, the cells were still perfectly balanced. I'm talking 0 0.001 um, or 0 0.01 voltage difference, very little basically better than we have right now with the CBCSO, which is supposed to be balancing. Anyway, um, that's just another side note. I, I don't have more details on that. So, yeah, I, uh, as soon as I have to return this CBCSO pack to its original owner, I'm going to go build my own 20S2P pack with the same exact cells but without a BMS at first, and then eventually I'll add one. I don't know if I'll find a suitable one. Maybe I'll buy one from Joe's Batteries, the Joe, whatever, Z Battery Solutions is the name he sells them under, I believe. But they're still in beta testing. And honestly, I don't necessarily want to be a beta tester on that. But it is a charge-only BMS. It can't hurt you while riding. That is all I have on the CBCSO. Talk to you guys next time.